this is your daily devotion for Wednesday, September 15th, and our reading this morning comes to us from the 5th chapter of Matthew, the 31st and 32nd verses. It has been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife, except for unfaithfulness, causes her to become an adulteress, and anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. If what Jesus had to say about murder and adultery were not enough to convict your heart and to convince you that keeping the law is not merely difficult, but impossible, then this one right here, this passage right here, may do it for many of us. Now, it is the year of our Lord 2021. There is scarcely a family in this country, including my own, that has not been touched on some level by divorce. We have to understand divorce in biblical times in order to understand what Jesus is saying here. This is not to say that the rules have changed, but it is to say that we must understand what divorce used to be like. Basically, under the law of Moses, a man could divorce his wife for any reason or no reason, any time he wanted to. All he had to do was tell her that he divorced her sometimes just once, sometimes three times, hand her a certificate of divorce which says our marriage no longer exists, and she could go on her way. And as a single adult woman in ancient Israelite society, she would have had very few rights, would have had to return to her family, who would have regarded this as a shameful thing. She was free to seek a new husband, and she might very well find one. But there was great damage done to the woman in the process. Now, like I said, a man can divorce his woman at any time for any reason. And a woman could divorce her husband, not at all. It was up to the man to decide that the marriage had ended. So, divorce, believe it or not, was actually just as common, if not more, back in biblical times than it is in our own. And when Jesus originally preached the Sermon on the Mount, it's a good bet that there were a great many people in the audience, a great many men in the audience, who had divorced their wives and believed themselves to be righteous in doing so. Elsewhere in Scripture, Jesus says that Moses gave this law because of hardness of heart. In other words, because people cannot forgive themselves the way God wants them to forgive one another. So Jesus not only says, well, here's the law, in this case saying that it's okay to get divorced, but he flips this one around by his way of intensifying it and saying that unless your spouse has been unfaithful to you, you are committing adultery. And anyone who marries a spouse you divorced for any reason other than unfaithfulness is also committing adultery. You cannot directly translate from divorce in the time of Jesus to divorce as we understand it in America right now. But it's clear to say that God's intent is for marriages to stay together. That's always dangerous because some people are abusive to their partners, and that is not God's will. Some people ignore their families or their children, and that also is not God's will. Divorce is never permitted in Scripture, but it is allowed. You understand the difference, right? In other words, it's never God's idea, but it is something that he permits because people, well, allows, because people can never fully forgive one another. God has infinite capacity to forgive. Ours is finite. It would be good if people did not divorce, but in order for people to never divorce, that would require people to be much better at being selfless than they are now. Because most of us, when we come right down to it, only have so much that we can take. Like I said, we cannot forgive one another endlessly. Is it ever okay to divorce? Well, by the strictest scriptural meaning, no. No, it isn't. But is it understood by God? I think it is. 
Jesus' intensification here does not thoroughly close the door, but it does say, you know, you need to take this seriously and not just divorce your spouse because you are annoyed with them. But I do want to be very clear. Abuse is never God's will. Never, not once. If you are being abused by your spouse or intimate partner, seek help. Okay? Seek it from me. Seek it from a counselor. Seek it from someone. Because this is not the way it is supposed to be. You were not put on this earth to be abused. And God's teachings about divorce, even as intensified by Jesus, are not intended to make you a victim of abuse. That is a much greater violation of God's will than divorce ever will be. Can we be clear on that? Okay. Let us pray. God, strengthen marriages. Help partners understand one another. Give us patience where so often we have little or none. Teach us to think not of ourselves, but of the other person and to seek what is for their benefit. Help us to understand that there are some laws that we simply cannot keep the way you would intend us to keep them. And help us to understand that while it may be occasionally necessary to break one of those laws, it's never okay. Instead, help us to believe, repent, and hold tightly to you even more so. The world can be so confusing, and people can be so hard to one another. Lord, help us. Help us with whatever it is we need in order to stay strong. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you again soon.